everybody, just wanted to make a small guide here on how to get a large amount of XP. Now this does take place at the end of the game, as you can see by that objective there, that's probably the last one you'll see. So just to run through some basic stuff for this, I am using the Peatsmaker with a Flawless Luck Rune in it. This will also work with the uh, Last Will, but as long as you can kill the enemies here, that's all that really matters. Personally, I'm a, like a really heavy tanky type with the uh, two-handed weapons and I try and hit really hard and it, this works out very well for me but because of that most of the information I give is going to be related to that but you can just adjust this to your own playstyle as you see fit so the information I give might not be as pertinent to what you are playing as but in the end the general information will still apply so I'm using a peacemaker on my back I put a shield just in case because we might see it the more rogue type enemies they have this like disappearing reappearing act where they come up behind you and they cut you in the back and having a shield on your back will help for that just in case uh so for that i have the eagle's wings i put a uh, flawless magic rune in it just because uh why not uh, i don't use the gauntlet i don't really see much of a point i have the whole lord set here and i improved my physical resistance just in case and the rings i use i switch between life leech and dim hope Life Leech, I don't remember where I got, but Dim Hope, if you are in the catacombs, is a part where these two guys are telling you to let them out and not the other guy, because one is claiming the other is a, a thief, and then they're both saying that they're the merchants that are innocent, because one's a liar and one's not. I let out the wrong guy, it turns out. So, I got Dim Hope because a merchant died. So, oops, but it's very useful, and what it does is Life Leech will make it so that when you kill an enemy, you restore some health. Dim Hope makes it so that every 20 to 30 seconds, you restore health. Now, I have an issue with this game, in that sometimes my trinkets don't work. I'll have Dim Hope on, I can run around for like 5 minutes, it'll never restore anything. It just doesn't. I don't know why. It, it happens often. That's why it's nice to have both. Uh, aside from that, you don't really need much else. Um, yeah, I mean, you can use your potions, but I recommend trying to really make sure you don't get hurt badly. It does a lot. If you have, a, I think it's called the Oris as a weapon, what it does is you can slam the ground and it will make a healing pool for you if you have its bonus effect with it. And this is useful for making sure that you don't use your potions because I have 12 of them in total, but I only have uh, 9 left because in emergency situations you might need to use it if you're not willing to lose your combo because it takes a hundred kills to get to a two hundred or a two point zero zero multiplier from just the standard one but uh... here it is the Urus pole sword you don't need it for anything other than that heavy attack i don't remember who i got this off of but yeah heavy attack straight healing pool that's very useful for making sure that you stay alive without having to burn through all your potions and then resetting if for whatever reason you do need to restore your potions and you have a lot like i do and these things just don't fill up as much as you need you can use it, quit the game, out to the menu, and then come back in, and you can just use it again. From there, what effectively happens is this thing resets completely, and you just use it again, and just keep doing that until your potions are full. But anyway, on to what we have. So, these are my stats. Uh, actually, a very nice thing I should mention if you're doing this farming run is I have absolutely no luck here. As you get a higher multiplier, you have a better chance of enemies dropping equipment and items. This is nice, because everyone in here has a very strong weapon. The sword that I have here, the Peacemaker, which is, I, to my understanding, the strongest weapon in the game, I got off of one of the swordsmen in this place. It was just a random drop on my, like, fourth run through. I just ended up jumping up and, and getting him in the face with my last will. I killed him, and I got the thing. Now, it does have a very high requirement, though, of 34 strength, so be ready for that. I would recommend at least having your faith up enough that you can level up things like prayer. It's useful. Mine heals me because I'm playing the warrior type, right? For you, it'll restore its own respective thing, but the good thing about it is that it distracts enemies. So in a bad situation, this is very, very useful. It's really the only one I use. Uh, I should also make sure to know, note that this is being done in New Game and not New Game Plus or Plus Plus or anything like that. So this is all just in the basic game it's in and of itself so I don't know if the numbers of XP will increase or what have you but yeah, there you go anyway on to it so the first thing I do is I come down here and I make sure I do a jumping attack on this guy and then I kill him now one thing you need to be careful of is this right here sometimes when you're going down the steps he'll skip one and then you'll stop sprinting and it's very useful to hit him with a jumping attack especially with a heavy two-handed sword because this combo right here this jump will hit him and stun him and you can immediately follow it up with a light attack which will kill him 
Uh, so this guy here, he's begging and crying on the ground, and... Yeah, like, you can say you're morally object to killing him, but, you know... Kinda useful for killing him, because it gives a lot. We'll count up how much this gives at the end, just to make sure, because I can just take the amount of XP that I had before, which is like 2.02 .02 million. It's a lot. So, we'll do a, a little bit of math at the end for that, but... These are the enemies that you need to be a little bit more careful of. These are the ones that give me the most issues, personally. Well, actually, no. Uh, the rogue guys give the most issue because I'm very slow, but... For guys like this, the first thing I found to do with a big weapon is run in and do a jumping attack. I hit him with that, and as soon as I see the damage number, I follow it up with a light attack. But if I hit them like this and actually cuts them, I do a light attack and I make sure that it kills them, because they won't be able to recover out of that knockback effect before it's too late. But if I hit them with a flying attack and they block it, I follow it up with a two-handed slam. That downward swing is two hits. That, it, what'll happen is the first hit will connect with them and hurt them further. It won't kill them, at least not with my stats. But the second hit will hit them so hard that it breaks their guard, so you can back away and recover all of your um, energy before it's too late, and then they start hitting you back. So there's another guy who's just sitting here on the ground, kill him with the big charge attack. As you can see, they pay out almost two grand. Like the lowest you'll get is like 1,600 off the archers, which is a lot even still. As a rogue type enemy. Very annoying to deal with. So just to make sure that if you're watching this and for some reason you don't remember where I am, this is inside the planetarium area. This is the Citadel and Keystone. Uh, these monks here, you'll see them. They, they're not doing anything bad. This guy's an asshole, though. He is the one who I accidentally let out of that cell when I shouldn't have. If you kill them, it doesn't matter. They'll just come back when you quit the game. This is just everybody comes back. So what we want to do, as you saw right there, you saw how it just fell out of the sprint. That's what I was talking about, where sometimes he skips a step and he just falls. This guy here, what I tend to do is try and lead him into this room, get a connection right there, and then kill him. What I try and do is I try to get him to sprint into the room. The reason I do that is because when he sprints into the room, he's not blocking. So when I get him, I always connect with him first. If he's rushing at you, you want to bring the fight to him, so you want to hit him first. So there are a few enemies in this place when you're running through it that you want to make sure that you get kind of in a blind turn with this playstyle. Like this guy here, you can kind of see his weapon. I missed there. I usually don't miss, but, you know, whatever. These guys you want to be careful of just because they attack quickly, they it, have a lot of health, and they can do a lot of damage very quickly. It adds up, especially for someone like me, and like, this attack here alone, like, if you see how much energy it just took, it's a lot. So a flying attack takes up most of what I have, and it's if I attack again, then I'm screwed. I have nothing left. There's another one. Don't show these people any mercy. Because they won't attack you when you're not looking, but... This is, it, you're giving yourself less. It, you'll still get the same amount of XP in the end if you just run it a few more times to make up for the difference of not killing these people if you don't want to, but... They'll come back, so try not to feel bad. So, here you can run all the way down, but I found the easiest thing to do is to jump and land here. When you've landed here, by the way, I have heavy armor, so if you roll off it shouldn't be so bad, because if you roll like that... I made it all the way to the bottom without getting hurt, which is pretty useful. Alright, so, by the way, just to mention, this guy right here, total bro. So the captain attacks you, and he's a douchebag, and you kill him, yada yada. And then you have this guy, and he never does anything to you. And he's super nice about it. I like him. So when you come here, the, what I try and do is there's an archer in the corner, and there's this guy here. There's also an archer to this guy's right, so what I try to do is get his attention if I can. There, he does that disappearing reappearing act. That attack is a pain in the ass to deal with, because for me, I have 15 vitality, I have 193 health, he hits me in the back for so much, it's terrible. But anyway, we might see more of them doing stuff like that later, you can see how much damage it does. So here you can make a decision on which way you want to go, personally I always prefer to go this way. They're both not looking, so you can just kind of run in and I can jump and slam right into him and kills him outright. Yeah, 1640 is the lowest you can get in this place. So when you come out here, what I always do is I hook this hard right, and I kill this guy first. Because over here is a uh, heavy swordsman knight, and I don't want to fight him yet. What I try and do is I try and clear this whole place. So I attract this guy's attention here, from the door, and I kill him over here. The reason I do this is very simply, there's an archer here. Now he's not looking, and that's a good thing for us now because we can do this, but... He will turn around and he just quickly fires an arrow right at you. He doesn't mess around with that stuff. Now here's a bit of a surprise attack, he's kind of just waiting for you. What you can do is you can actually turn your camera and lock onto him, you can just come out with a running attack and get him, and he's dead. Didn't even get to put up a fight, didn't have a chance. Then you want to run through here. Now this room is a bit annoying, just because I hate the rogue type enemies, but 
I get a little bit lucky in that they're stuck in this tiny corridor with me. And they have nowhere they can go. They have to fight me. So what I can do is I can kind of just bait them and distract them. And whoop. Let's see how this is going to go. He's going to swing and miss and then get him back. Yeah. So they're kind of stuck in this small place with me. As you can see when I swing my sword, it reaches across the entire thing. It is hard for them to avoid it unless I fly past them like I did before. Then there's this guy down here, same thing. I connected with him because I saw him coming into a sprint, and then I kill him. Had it been him blocking it, I'd do like 53 damage or whatever it is, and then I would just hit him with a big slam and then walk backwards to avoid him. When you come out here, you want to walk down here, because this is pretty much the only guy here. He rolls at me, makes a mistake, because he was stuck going forward, and then we punish him for it. I want to run all the way back up here. That crystal, if for whatever reason you didn't get in the beginning of the game, you can get it now. Come up here, and jump your way down. Let me just run across here. So this half is clear, and then we want to kill this guy here. Now, the best thing I found to do is when these guys start walking at you, if you sprint at them, they'll try and do their own jump attack. As soon as they start their own jump attack, if you start your own, if you start your own jump attack, provided you have a sword and not like an axe, you will win every time. Even if you start a little bit later than them, you will win. Just because your attack is going to come out faster. So he initiated his first, but he still dies first. He got hit first because you're just quicker. And because this sword is so strong, and these guys, by the way, are the ones I was talking about who give you this sword, as you can see. It's not the same, which I find weird. But, yeah, they're the ones who give it to you. But you'll always win. Every single time, provided you just hit them. And even if you don't, I think if you have, like, thick enough armor and high enough poise, you can, you'll be fine. Alright, so this guy I leave backwards. Only because if you look down here in the bottom corner, there's a guy sitting right down there, and his aggro range is pretty far. And the range it would take you to try and get a backstab, this guy will come out for you. Alright, now he's dead. So one thing to note is, this is a staircase going down. You can swing over somebody, and you still kind of connect with their hitbox, but you need to be close enough for it to work. Otherwise, they're just going to stab you right in the stomach, and it's going to do a ton of damage. Everyone here hits really, really hard. And he's dead. Alright. So now that we've cleared this half as well, we just run all the way back. Now you can go in here and kill all the spiders and stuff, but I don't think they're worth it. I mean, I think they're worth like 420 XP or whatever it is at 2 times multiplier, but what's the point when you need to kill 4 or 5 of them to match what you're getting off of one of these guys? So what I do is I run all the way back here. Now here's when I kind of stop sprinting and let my energy recover, and so I can come in here and get him with the running attack. What he threw there, you need to be careful of. If you don't kill him right away and you run up into that thing, it will repeatedly blow up or Something like that. I don't quite remember what it does, and at that point, because it keeps doing that, it'll hurt you badly really quickly. So you need to be careful of that, unless you have really high magic resist, or what exactly the damage is for that, I'm not sure. So, when you come in here, this room is empty, but this one over here is... It does have a swordsman in it, so this is one of those situations where I was talking about you kind of take a blind turn, unless you... They provide you want to be quickly going through this, that is. You got to do a bit of a blind run and attack. So you can kill him like that, there's an archer out there, but you don't want to go for him because there's another guy here. You want to make sure you have enough energy to get him like this. And he's dead too. So, when you're coming out here towards where this crystal is, you can run and get a blind attack right across here like a drive-by, and hit him in the face. Now he will miss you... often, with that kind of attack if he goes from the staircase, but for some reason he doesn't always. I blocked my sword there, that's why I cost all my stamina. So we'll come in, we'll get him with the big attack, and finish him off there. Alright, so he's dead. Sometimes that guy will fall, like, out of the whole level, I don't know why, but he just does. And I find it weird, but you'll miss out on, like, 1,920 XP, which sucks, but it could be worse. This guy, I found the best thing to do is to try and bait him away from here, because sometimes you'll swing, you'll miss, and then he'll disappear and then come up behind you and he'll stab you in the back for, like, 40 damage. Uh, this guy, try and bait him up here. And the reason I do this is because there's actually two guys down there, and one is because he can't run away from you if he's stuck in this small space. If he rolls backwards, then good for him, he deserves to get away from you because he made the only good choice he can make, but otherwise, he's kind of screwed. So come in here, get him, he's coming at me with a sprint, and he's dead. So he can either be standing here, if you don't see him in here, he's usually standing over here, just looking down this way. So this guy is always here, and he's always buddied up with him. You want to be careful because he, he doesn't sprint often, but when he does start sprinting at you, he's going to hit you with a jumping attack and you might not notice. You might think like, I have enough time to kill the rogue enemy because it's going to take a while for him to walk to me, and then he starts running at you and he's going to cleave you right in half. And he does a lot of damage too. I mean, he I have the entire Lord set, I have very highly improved physical resistance, and I get hit for, I think, 30 damage. I think. 
So very shortly here, you're going to see how my level 3 prayer comes really, really, really in handy. Because it's uh, kind of crucial for the, the, killing these three guys down here. So I hit him with a running attack because these guys can't see me. And he's dead. So what I do down here is I kind of walk like this. As soon as Harkin's I say, here. yep, Harkin's here, traitor. I cast this, I jump over them, I land here, and I do a big wound, wound up attack, and I just get them like this. Now, sometimes these guys block like that, and that sucks, but what can you do? And there we go, and he's dead. So as you can see, even this guy, he's stuck walking this way, but he won't go for the prayer. He won't even attack me, he completely ignores me, and you just walk up behind him, and you can just gore him like this. And in one prayer, just like that, everyone's dead. So we've cleared this whole place out, and I can uh, show you the difference in XP after. But what's going to happen now is... You kind of got to make it a bit of a decision. It's nothing special, really. It's a minor choice. So as you're running back here, what you can do is one of two things. You can use... Well, I guess one of three things, actually. You can use this crystal here and quit out the game there. You want to make sure that you're holding your left stick down and then click the uh, Use button. So on the PS3, that'd be hold the left stick in, push X on the... Uh, or be on the Xbox to be uh, using A, and then on the PC, I'm not sure what it is. I'm, I am playing this on the PC, I'm using a PS4 controller, but it brings up 360 prompts because it's just the program has to work that way. So when you come here, you can also exit out this door and then just enter right back in, and it'll respawn everybody if you want to just keep going. But me personally, I like to be safe. I don't want to lose this amount of effort, and uh, it's not a whole lot of effort, I just don't want to lose the time. He's lost so he's what I do is every time after I've killed everybody, I run all the way back through here. I come back up towards the planetarium. That's Kazlo, by the way. If anyone didn't notice, he's been killed. Yeah, so you want to run all the way back up here. That's the first door. That You don't want that one. You want this second one here. If you're, you need to change out your runes, you can do that, but you come over here. Hold the left stick in. Use it. It doesn't reset your multiplier and you're good. And you can see, if you want to do your own math, but I'll probably just set up an overlay here to show you, that we've made a lot of XP. A lot. So now that I've shown you the detailed way to do it, I'll show you a quick way that I do it. Just me kind of doing it normally. There's nothing special to it. It's it's really rather simple. Uh, hopefully things go well as well as they were before. Because, eh, things are going pretty nicely. There's a few enemies I tend to screw up on. Like, this guy's one of them. But he's dead. Nothing can save us now. And charge up here. He's lost his mind. And he's dead. Jump down here, break this. I'll walk a bit, sprint a little, come here. Flying attack's not gonna block it, and he's dead. Alright, recharge and kill him. Let me sprint up here. I I'm pretty sure there's no way to jump off of this thing and then land down there. At least not that I could find. But there might be a way, I won't rule it out. I'm sure there's some bootleg way. Alright, and then we're just done with this whole area here. I'm sorry if the explanation was really long, I just want to make sure that in detail I explain how simple this really is and how you do it. Again, this is done with my build in mind, which is not so fair for the others, but I have never played any other type, so I don't really know how to give the advice. And you're done. Alright. And you're dead too. Alright, so you can see how quick things are going once you kind of get into it. He's minding his own business, everything's great, and he's super sad, and then he's dead. Those guys, you really want to be careful that you kill them in one hit, or you can kill them as soon as they, you hit them and they start to get up, because they can hit pretty hard too, and they... You'd be surprised how much poise they have, they'll just take a hit and then do whatever about it, they don't give a shit. Alright, so we come out here, he's here, let's bring to get his attention. No, not what I wanted to do, that's okay. There we go. Having enough energy to deal with that is always nice. Get him like that, there we go. I enjoy the drive-by style of just coming and hit them real quick. Oh yeah, sometimes these guys run in a circle around you. I found the best thing to do is just stop until they kind of get tired of doing it and they run right at you. If they're not running in a straight line, you gotta be careful. He was just trying to do that running to the side thing there, which is very annoying. Oh no, latency issue on my controller. Yeah, I'm using a PS4 controller. Sometimes the program has a latency issue, but... Lucky, luckily it was on uh, a weak guy, so it wasn't an issue. So you can see now like how wonderful this sword is, how this armor is being useful, and how just we're cleaving everything in half. Alright, whoa, didn't mean to get both of them. Alright. All 
Alright, there we go. You can see how useful prayer is. By the way, if you're playing a warrior type, prayer is ultra useful if you don't want to use a potion. You can put on uh, Dim Hope and then activate this and this will heal you. At the same time, the Dim Hope will heal you as well. So you can recover a large amount of health over a short period of time. If you don't mind just waiting. Well, oh, why did the attack cancel there? Oh no. That attack is bad. I hate that attack. I often get hit by it and then does a ton of damage and then end up spending a lot of time killing people trying not to get hit so I can make up for the health difference. Alright, and there we go. This half is just done. And run back through here. If you wanted to as a safety measure, you could just save mid run through just to make sure you have everything accounted for. Oh yeah, it's a dirty trick, but in case you die, you can just immediately pause really quickly and then restart. I would not advocate doing this because it feels like cheating, but if you're like me and you're running around with like 2 million, do you really want to chance it? And... big hit right there. I just keep on going. Keep on keeping on. That attract his attention. And there we go. He's done. And he's gonna run at me, so we get him back. Because he's going to miss with his charge attack because it's slower. Alright, there we go. There's just one guy left in this half. And he's dead. Yeah, so you can see it's really not that bad. Especially when you have uh, a good way to kill him. Because I'm playing, again, a strength-based character. And have a really heavy hitting weapon and heavy armor. I can tank the hits and I can just hit enemies back for a lot really easily. And remember to stop sprinting here just to get a bit back, just in case. Because you want to make sure you have just enough to get him like that. Block here so I can get the uh, energy back, so I can come in with a big blind hit. Must suck for that guy, he's minding his own business, and somebody just rounds a corner with a sword to the face for him. Yeah, this guy, in case you can't kill him like I am, enemies like this, you can just walk up behind him and kill him that way. If it makes it that much easier for you. Ooh, almost got me. Almost. Alright. Big swing, big miss. Get him back, and it's done. And this guy's down here. Let's see if we can attract his attention a bit. I'm in. Is he gonna sprint? Nope. That's what I was talking about, where he blocks it. But see, now he had enough time to get away. He tries to counterattack, and it's too late. And he's already dead. Try and get him to walk over here. And he's dead, too. Alright. You can see just how quickly we're tearing through this again. This is just absolutely ridiculous. Once you get into the groove of it, you can almost autopilot. And I was talking to a friend on Skype, and I felt like I was barely using anything of my own capacity. I was carrying a good conversation while doing this because it just turns into something that's very automated and it's very easy. What I also like is that for it's like 10,000 per minute is what you're effectively getting in experience from killing all these guys. Because I think if you get about 70,000. I think it takes about seven, eight minutes to do this. So it's not that bad. And get him too. Yeah, sometimes after you kill the archer, it'll auto lock onto one of these guys down here. I don't know why that happens. Kill the and jump over. Ah. Oh. Hit me with a stamina break. And just kill him. If there's ever just one guy left, then it just turns into every other situation where it's not that bad because, well, it's just you and him. And he got himself killed. And it's done. There you go. That was the whole run, and we'll just run back. So this is going to be me running back to my usual spot. If you pick any of the other two here, then you know so be it. I would not recommend exiting out the door where the three guys are, just because unless you're ready to deal with the three of them at the same time running at you, it, it could be a bad time. It really could He's be. Lost his mind. Lost my mind through all this XP. God damn. I should also mention that I, I was overpowered before I even came in here. I don't feel like I'm supposed to be level 75 in the first playthrough, but it just kind of ended up happening. And... There we go. That's a complete run. As you can see again, there's just a huge difference. I started this video with 2.02 .02 million, now have 2.17 million. And it, it was two runs and that's it. So as you can see, it's, it's really quick, high reward, not much effort. All you really gotta do is just set yourself up for it and then just learn how to do it, and that's all there really is to it. I mean, I don't think uh, anyone will really have too much issue with this. 
But in case you do, just let me know and I maybe I can help you out, but I only I only know how to help out with this kind of build. I've never played any of the other classes, I don't know the magics or anything. But anyway, that was a, a more detailed and then example quick and dirty run through just how to make a bunch of XP at the end of the game. And I uh, hope this is helpful for somebody.